Jeez, I can be an elephant. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. My name's Coriander, and if you'll remember last time, we made it here to Harvest Valley, essentially the poison pit of Dark Souls 2. It's just a fun place to run around and swim if you want to die. Uh, we're actually going to... We're not moving ahead in this area right now. For now, I'm just going to talk to this lady right here. Alright, so this lady, Stone Trader Cloan, she's basically just your go-to to buy upgrading stones like Titanite. And she has a few, well, two spells, Soul Appease and Dead Again, a Hex and a Miracle. Not very useful, but they can be, I guess, if you use them in the right light. But for right now, she only sells regular Titanite shards. But once you exhaust her dialogue, I came here in search of rare stones, but the place is nothing like I was told. All this don't at least some of I've I've searched. Perhaps we'll meet. I've searched. All right. Once you exhaust her dialogue, she'll say, "She'll she's gonna move shop, and then she will appear back in Majula, and you can buy a lot more things from her when she has moved there, which is fantastic, and I'll probably do eventually, but not right now. For now, what we are gonna do is we are gonna go to the area that I've been putting off." because I simply just I just don't like to do it at a low level and that's basically the only reason it is this area right here the second bonfire in Hyde Tower Flame right after the Dragon Rider up the stairs from the Dragon Rider boss room and you just go there you come down these stairs these spooky spooky scary stairs and go ahead and get this item. It's the healing item. It's all down here. A couple things you can get. Uh, not great things, not terrible things, you know. And I forget, but ah, oh, here we go. This guy. He's guarding a chest. And in the chest is something important, I'm pretty sure. What is it? Sublime Bone Dust again. Yes! Need that. So make sure to come down here and grab the Sublime Dome Bone Dust. And now we have ourselves a little elevator. Just step on the button. Okay, I think I'm going to use this fragrant branch right here because there's a... Uh, well, I hope there is, if I'm remembering right. Come on, please just wake up. Okay, up here... If I am correct, there is a mastodon. This... that, got that gigantic fucking elephant right there. Is the mastodon? Ray, what did I get? Mastodon leggings. I can be an elephant. That's an Estus flash shard. That's what I wanted. Okay, so there's an Estus flash shard up here. There are these broken useless doors that look like they would go somewhere but they don't because Dark Souls likes to put in useless doors. 
and a chest that I don't remember anything about. Oh, it's just the night set. And you just keep walking on the watery path. Eventually you get to this cave. And it's just literally you can't miss the bonfire here. It leads you straight to it. And that's the bonfire for this area. So I guess I'll rest here and show you guys what it looks like. Alright, be prepared and welcome to my one of my three least favorite parts of Dark Souls 2. No Man's Wharf immediately opens up and you're getting fired at by fire arrows. Yeah, this is why I don't like this place. It's just... Oh, God! <sighs> it's just dark, and you can't see anything. And I don't like the dark. I like to see things. And everybody here is just an asshole. There's just surprise enemies sometimes. There's just... <sighs> It's an area that they made and, and then laughed because they knew. They knew what they were doing. It's also super easy, like insanely easy to fall into the water here and the water is, water is an instant death but like you fall into the bottomless pit of water that you didn't know was there. Okay, you see... Wait. Yeah, let's summon this guy. Okay, you see... This right here? That guy? There, there are guys just like hanging off of the boards. Waiting to... For you to step across them. And then they pop out of the water. Or out of the... Like from above, from beside the bridge, and they just hit you, and you're probably gonna fall into the bridge or in the water by accident because they hit you, and it's just, it's all just not fun. But I mean, this NPC summon is pretty brutal. What the hell? Okay, and then. Up here, we have. I'm sorry. I suppose I've grown. Okay, so if you remember, in I think episode two, we found uh, Lucatil of Mira in uh, the place with the blacksmith, uh, Lost Bastille, and you find her here again. And this time she gives you a human effigy, which is really nice. You always need effigies. And she will help you with the boss in this area once it comes around, I'm pretty sure. Ooh, throwing knives. Ooh, souls. Ooh, piece of cake. There he goes. Since he was a small sign, he disappears either after 10 minutes or after so many uh, enemies are killed. And his was the enemies, I'm guessing, because I don't think it's been 10 minutes since I summoned him. Oh no, no, it's probably like 5 minutes. Either way, he goes away after a short time. The things I hate. These things right here. They do bleed damage. But you can backstab them. And they're afraid of light. So, everything has a bright side, I guess. Ah, I get it, bright side, afraid of light. Okay. Oh god.
Okay, so the bleed effect, it does a percentage of your health, and it makes your stamina not at its full. Ah. It makes you only have 75% of your stamina, and I think you might walk slower or something. Because I definitely was, but that might just be me. It's great for uh, fighting bosses, and well, some bosses. But yes, I think it does like a third of your total health, or something around that. Oh, here's one of my favorite weapons. The great sword. It's not even that great of a weapon. It's just real fun, because it's real big. Here, look. Where, did, where is that? Alright, look at this thing. You can just golf swing. You can just slam it down real hard. And it's got like a base 200. It's insane. Any strength build, I love just using this, even if it's not my main weapon. Also, if this is your first time through this area, be very cautious, like, around corners and all that, because this game loves to hide enemies from you. If there's one thing that this game does right, it's surprise you with too many things and too many enemies to deal with. And make absolute certain positive that you ring this bell. Ring this bell before you drop down there. Now it's just a game of dropping down carefully. It's, oh god, this thing. That guy. Right there. Yep, there's another one. They do bleed and they have really cool armor. I actually got the headpiece and only the headpiece too, and they use like claws. There's really cool enemies to fight, and I do believe tis a secret door there. Oh, fragrant branch, got it back. There we go. No, stop, please. There we go. Alright, large titanite and regular titanite and fading soul. Okay, make sure to just check around. Because there are tons of little secret area things to get. Oh, good. Okay. Who are you? I, Gavlan, will. Gavlan wants so what? With Gavlan, you will. Okay, so this is uh, Dark Souls 2 favorite merchant. Uh, he's Lonesome Gavlin. You can buy from him. He's got tons of poison stuff. Uh, poison throwing knives, poison moss, poison... Or rotten pine resin. Put poison on your weapons. Do poison to your enemies. Heal poison when you get poisoned. Uh, and he has the Ring of Giants, which will increase your poise so you don't get like staggered so much. I'm actually just gonna buy out all of his freaking poison arrows because they're very helpful. And you can sell to him, which I love. I hate having cluttered up shit stuff in my inventory. Okay, so after one. <laughs> uh, after one talk he moves to a new location that's actually pretty farther in the game that's why I bought out all of his arrows I actually made my money back selling the things that I had but this is uh, one of the shortcuts that you can open up this was okay so in the original this was the only shortcut to the boss door so you didn't have to go through the entire process of killing everything or running through everything all over again and just be super careful because like there's this shit and that shit just a bunch of douchebags hanging around okay and right here here is the majesty that is this shortcut 
Look how fucking easy this is. This is the start. Right over there, that's the start where I came out when I started this. And right here is like next to the boss. So that saves like eight years of grinding through people if you keep dying. This is a magic merchant that I can't talk to because I still don't have the required intelligence for him. Uh, here's Lucatil coming to help me fight this boss. So, just kill everybody up top. I mean, you don't have to kill everybody up top, but I recommend killing everything before you go any farther anywhere in this game because they're just gonna screw you up later. While I'm here, this fight is completely like surrounded by water and I'm pretty sure the water rises the longer you take in the boss fight so everything gets more difficult to move around and stuff so I'm going to enchant my weapon with lightning go through and fight the flexile sentry the two-headed guy with bleed on both weapons both sides oh no mate you can't have risk did I? Do I have it? Well, shit. Didn't think this through. Let's just do it till it breaks. Okay, so... Final kit. Oh god, it's so slow. Oh, yay. There you go. See, not very difficult boss fight at all. And now you're up here, and before you do anything at all, open this chest. You get Pyromancy Flame and a Fireball, which you actually don't need... You don't need either Intelligence or Faith to use uh, Pyromancies, but it helps with the power of them, so it's recommended that if you're going to use pyromancies you should get at least 60 total in either one because like that's the hard cap so if and then you want to examine this and somehow you magically know how to pilot the ship and the ship just sort of goes on its merry creepy way and here we are you still have a little ways to go before you're at a bonfire right here so just keep on going and then you just step on this and you're off and here we are at the lost bastille and you remember that's where the blacksmith is. We're just on the other end of it. So, thank you all for watching. If you like the video, please leave a like. If you want to suggest things that I should do, leave a comment. Uh, if you want to see more, subscribe. I'm probably going to start uh, another series alongside this sometime soon for anyone that's even watching this far into the video. And Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.